are watching Breaking News and I'm your host Rainbow and I'm here to report that there has been a lethal and highly contagious disease in BC Deer for the first time in the province history. Since early this September, black-tailed deer in southern Vancouver Island near Duncan and Nanaimo and on several Gulf Islands including Galliano, Maine and Pender and Salt Spring Island have been dying from a novel virus called AHD or adenovirus hemorrhagic disease. An adenovirus is a double-stranded DNA virus that damages the deer's blood vessels in its lungs and elementary tract and it has a highly fatal short course of infection. Symptoms of the adenovirus hemorrhagic disease can include difficulty breathing, foaming or drooling from the mouth, diarrhea, and seizure. The epizootic virus is first found in California in 1993 and it caused a natural die-off in the deer population. Woods et al. 1999 studied the transmission of the adenovirus infection in the deer population in California where it was first discovered in 1993. The adenovirus is spread through direct contact between the deer by fluids such as saliva, feces, and urine. Transmission through airborne routes, contaminated food and water, and contaminated equipment may also occur. Our ecological research question for this project is how does deer biotic interaction facilitate the transmission of AHD? In lecture week four, Dr. Singh explained how maternal effects such as maternal stress is inherited and transferred to her embryo. Maternal stress includes danger felt by the competition, climate change, and habitat fragmentation. A study by Montes et al. 2009 shows that maternal stress affects the offspring's body mass. Specifically, offsprings that had a smaller body mass that then grew significantly smaller antlers due to a lack of nutrition during gestation. Antlers are important for reproduction because males use antlers to attract females for sexual reproduction and males also use antlers as weapons in fights between males and to protect female deers. So an increase in maternal stress can result in a decrease in reproduction and protection from competition between other male deers, thereby decreasing the population. This is important because stressed and or young deers are most susceptible to adenovirus related diseases based on observational and experimental data. Stressed deer can experience stress induced shedding and this increases the chances of transmission of AHD through deer saliva, urine, and feces. Other factors that could contribute to animal stress is climate change. The impact of AHD is thought to be felt more acutely because climate change has stressed animals and changed forage availability. Harsh winters and drought can both cause acute declines in wild deer population from which it could take years to recover from these stochastic events are now occurring more frequently due to climate change and are compounded by a lar larger term trend linked to climate change that also affects wild deer population health. Furthermore, human impacts can increase stress among deer individuals through habitat fragmentation, 
Dr. Parfrey explains in Lecture 23 that habitat fragmentation is the breaking up of continuous habitat into habitat patches amid a human-dominated landscape. A habitat fragmented by barriers could result in small fragmented genetically isolated populations that are more susceptible to local infection spreading and population decline than large diverse populations. Habitat fragmentation also increases stress and this increases the individual chances of getting the virus. This suggests that the maternal effects passed on from the mother deer to her offspring, climate change and habitat fragmentation facilitates the transmission of the adenovirus hemorrhagic disease. This disease is still very new and its effects are poorly understood. According to the SPCA, there is currently no treatment or vaccine for this disease. Further research is needed to determine its cellular mechanisms and future treatments. Fortunately for us, according to the BC government, there is currently no evidence that the adenovirus hemorrhagic disease can be transmitted to humans, pets, or livestock. However, hunters and meat eaters are still warned not to eat any meat from the dead deers. This concludes my presentation. Um, thank you so much for listening and stay safe and be healthy. Um, this is the list of the reference that I used and thank you.